Going back to my last shaft of review, Deku didn't really say he's going to try fight Quirkless, but that was an idea from Ochaku. That being said, that would have been a hell of idea. I would have loved that. But I guess it wants to do what it does best. Squash them. The battle has finally reached to the conclusion. Before you can open a bottle of champagne, it's likely to have an epilogue before we can kiss the art goodbye. With that said, I thought this battle was very disappointingly underwhelming. I don't know if it's because of the pacing or lack of energy it felt throughout. Maybe it's because the formula of rinse and repeat from previous battles dried out. Or maybe the care factor has diminished to the point that it tells me side character should remain in the background. The real discussion stems from the whole controversial decision with six quirks of one for all for Deku. And this chapter continues the trend. To this day, it's one of the uncalled for decisions when the foundation before was perfect enough. It's not the worst, but it's still not good. It's only now Kohi decides to introduce a limitation, but it's one that I already expected before his quirk kick into high gear. If anything, believe it or not, it sort of makes it worse. When Deku uses the black whip to stop the pipes, he did it with ease. The problem is, it begins to hurt him and disappears. It happened because his body can only output 20% for one for all and it's not enough to use his full capability. If his body can use it at 100%, he can use it like Spider-Man on steroid. In other words, the more percent he can use, the more duration he can use before it begins to hurt him. This is no repercussion, it's a barrier waiting to break. Repercussion is a toll or sacrifice to pay in order to function. Take Naruto for example, Rising Shuriken is an attack that slices through cells. The repercussion is it damages the user's hand and it can be permanent. If the user continues to use it, then one day the hand will be destroyed. Black Whip is held back by limitation, it's a way to prevent spamming but more importantly, delay the inevitable that is broken beyond belief. I mentioned that this makes it worse. I am aware of fans somewhat getting their revenge and calling Kohi a mad genius. I don't judge and I can't speak for everyone nor attended to, but I never said he will master Black Whip right away. My issues came from ruining the old foundation of an underdog tale and granting him unnecessary extra quirks. I don't know how well he would do, but he used it here only to last longer before it rejects his body. I knew it would be based on one for all, but duration isn't it. It leaves me thinking, why even introduce it so early? I suppose it was done for shock value as Kohi once mentioned there's a revelation that will make you go wow. I can't confirm this is it, but it certainly got fans active for better or worse. Also get is done to keep us guessing for other quirks in the future. That all said, why not wait a little longer? Why not even use an old version of one for all and have a technique that only requires this amount of percentage? It was fine when he did it against overhaul, but introducing more than fisting is an ideal I guess. The most baffling part is how it is limited for now. It could have at least opened a door for some other creativity. But now we can't even get a minute long Spider-Man until he's 100%. I suppose it's meant to be a one trick pony until he grows. So much for more variety, Bonoma goes on a long rambling to make Ochaku speak up, but she wouldn't say a word. In hindsight, this is a waste of time unless of course a lot more character will go to him and Class B. The only noteworthy piece is how his quirk, despite he can only use one copy quirk at a time, can store the lasting effect even after switching up. In other words, he can use other quirk effect in which plays a part later on. Ochaka goes to our next phase, but concerned if what he said means something bad is coming for Deku. The sad part is how it sounds like the tension for this battle was going to be good. Something that will make it the best one yet. Well, 
Let's start with this. It's kind of sad to see Shinsho running away after Deku stopped the pipes. So this is the second round that I was hyped for? Deku now uses 8% because nostalgia. But really, he's playing safe in this case. Literally out of nowhere, a random twin impact hits Deku, giving Shinsho one opportunity to fight back. Monoma did that back when he attacked him in the last chapter, only he activated Shoda's quirk. Honestly, the only cool part was this scene. That's a long-term teamwork that I can respect. After this, it's like reading a series that was reported to get cancelled. After Minata pulling a Gran Torino, he's immediately stopped in his track by Shoda. Well, he tried. Mina's getting bombarded by flying objects. It's up to Ochako to assassinate the girls, and she did it so. I forgot their names. I'm sorry. On one hand, it's convenient for them to lose focus and get one shot by her. On the other hand, at least Ochako took out two, albeit a bit underwhelming. I'll take it since this series has her dried out from not performing anything, so at least she won some. It doesn't change my mind about her treatment, especially once again, her arsenal lacks an update. It's one shot after another. Not to mention, this is Deku's plan, but whatever. Hey, it's not slam attack. I'll take it. Just before you can say Shinsho vs Deku is here, Deku grabs his cloth. Just before it wraps him around, spins himself, and reverses it back to him. Mina pulls a show you can on Shoda? And Deku wraps Shinsho tightly for the victory. No wonder Shinsho isn't on Volume 22 cover. I can't believe he got jobbed out twice here. Class B has only won once, and Class A won three. Were you expecting something? Honestly, I did. It's amazing how I once thought Class B receiving a spotlight should be fun, exciting, and interesting. Instead, they have been nothing but obstacles towards Class A. They are basically jobbers with lack of any true fleshed out characters. Only the ones we knew already get something, and that's being generous. Barely anything left a good impression. It's not like Hakyu, where it introduces a new team, yet give them characters and make you care. Here, I couldn't care less. The reason why I thought this battle was disappointing is not just because of Shinsho, which is awful after the last chapter, but screw underdogs, right? But because how everything was settled. Yes, they gave Class A some troubles, but largely when it comes down to results, Class A overwhelmed them. Not even Battle 2 made them feel victorious. Back to this battle, it was settled so fast, it was like the editor begged Kohei to end this arc. The last fair treatment was Battle 3. At least I can believe Class B could win, but even then, characters needed more. It's only going to rely on teachers and how they will say, both classes are well matched. Also, add in Plus Ultra, since it felt tacky with Midnight saying it for Battle 2. So not only they lack fleshed out characters or development, but they had underwhelming performance for the most part. Well, okay then. I know, same can be said for Class A outside of the three, but I'm trying not to die by fans here. This chapter was average to me, but it can vary for many. It depends on what you seek for or how much you care about the characters. I want to care for them, but they don't offer much for me to ask for more. It's more of a petty reason rather than my genuine interest. People have said that this arc demonstrated why side characters are worse than main characters. I don't want to agree, but this arc did hurt them in some ways. I expect the teachers and Bakugo to question about the Black Whip, which could happen in the next chapter. Whatever the epilogue contains, it's time to call it in, and hopefully, the next arc will grasp the old firing spirit of greatness. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. Well, there's a lot of people going crazy over the reddits, the community, forums, whatever you can find. It's just upsetting that we see how the fandom has gone very crazy for the wrong purposes. It is what it is. I still think this arc itself was not good. Maybe I will talk about more detail in somewhere. Maybe I'll talk about it here. Maybe in the next chapter. I don't know. I was not a fan and I'm just glad we're done with this one. What do you think of this chapter? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time.
Take care.